OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. My name is Jennifer Gallardi. I teach with Milpitas Adult School, and I'm a subject matter expert uh, for OTAN. Uh, I usually present on topics of citizenship and um, and technology, I particularly use YouTube a lot because I record uh, my students' uh, citizenship practices and that's been developed into a YouTube channel. So today I will be talking about YouTube, but before we begin, I'm actually going to um, upload a video and then we're gonna return to the video and we're gonna talk about uh, adding closed captions. Also, before we begin, would anybody like to introduce themselves or would any, does anybody have any specific questions? Does anybody have any YouTube channels themselves? Okay, great. So here I am. This is the one of the, the websites that I'm actually going to be using, uh, or excuse me, YouTube channels I'm going to actually be using. I'm in my studio. I'm going to create, a, upload a YouTube channel, and then we'll return to this after uh, the presentation. So I've, excuse me, I'm gonna start this again. Um, up, up on the right, up on the right, right corner, we see the create, and we see something that looks like a movie projector. We're gonna click that. It's going to say upload videos. We're going to select the file. We're selecting the file here. And this is just a 10 second video of me saying hello. Here I can change the title. So I'm going to say hello. I can add a description. And um, I can upload a thumbnail. And a lot of times I create thumbnails that basically look like an introductory screen or uh, just simply a photo of myself and maybe say hello from Jennifer. Uh, we could do that in a later part. I can add it to playlists. So I have a whole bunch of playlists here from ESL1. I, um, so I'm gonna say something about student, uh, I'm gonna add it to student interviews. Okay, done. I'm gonna go further down. I'm gonna say, you have to say that if it's made for kids or not made for kids. So I'm saying, no, it's not made for kids. And here I can add things in here, like, do I have a paid promotion? No, I don't have a paid promotion. I wanna allow automatic chapters. So what does that mean? That it's basically special or certain points in your video where either you change the subject or change the slide or introduce another topic. You want that to be enabled so you can, so your users can pinpoint where they want to start and stop on the video. We can add tags, for instance, like ESL, or I can add in my hometown, or I can add in adult education or ed tech. I wanna note the video language. The, so my video language is in English and I'm going to basically say that this content has never aired on television in the United States. The recording date is gonna to default today and the recording, the video location is going to default to my, my hometown. Here I would be adding my standard YouTube license. The other choices I could do is Creative Commons and you can basically specify the attributions. However, I'm gonna stick with uh, standard YouTube license. The reason is, is because if somebody violates your copyright, you have recourse to basically uh, um, to file a complaint with YouTube and they can take that down for you. Do I want people to sample the content? So for instance, do I want my uh, students or other people to come in and cut up the, um, 
uh, basically take uh, a film clips from it and use it in their own materials. I don't necessarily want to do that. Of course, you can basically choose that yourself. I'm gonna say that this is basically um, edutainment. Maybe you could say it's edutainment and activity, but it's, I'm saying that it's education. Um, and, uh, oh, so, and then again, it's the United States and those kind of things. Video elements, I could add subtitles and it's basically, it's, this is gonna be automatic. So this is, they're gonna develop the closed captions there. The check checks is there's no copyright. So YouTube has basically reviewed the video that I already uploaded and they're making sure have I basically copied somebody else's music. And then now we're going to say, I can make it private, unlisted or public. So what does that mean? Public, everybody can see the video. Unlisted means only people with the specific link, links can watch the video. Uh, that could be uh, an appropriate, that could be a good for your a certain group of students that you want to see, and maybe people outside the, the your uh, group, you don't want them to see it. And then private would be one-on-one, -on -one. only you and the student you choose to share it with can see it. So I'm get, again, I'm going to say public, or I can even schedule the premiere, and it's going to publish. I had the link that I can share and I'm gonna come back to that. So anyway, it's now, I can see it on my dashboard. It's going to basically go through its, its checks and we're gonna come back to this and basically do things with closed captions in a little bit. So let me go back to this and I'm gonna go back now to my presentation. So during this, we're gonna talk about adding content to a YouTube channel, create playlists to deliver targeted content and ask answer questions about closed captions, prophecies, et cetera, for our future webinars. So let's get to build, creating a, a YouTube channel. I wanna go through the initial steps and then I'm gonna demonstrate this, okay? So here you can basically simply log in with your Gmail account when you log in with your G, uh, a Gmail account, you can basically say, I wanna create a channel. It's gonna show this button that says, get started. It's gonna, they're gonna choose, they're gonna ask you, do you, what name do you wanna use? Do you wanna use your own name or do you wanna create a custom name? So for instance, instead of saying, I wanna be Mel, um, uh, Jennifer Gallardi, it's gonna say, I wanted to be Milpedius ESL1, or if you notice in the previous uh, the previous demo, I basically said that was Milpitas chat. You can upload a profile picture and add descriptions, links, etc. You want to do this a little bit later. First, you just want to get that that channel off the ground. Then you can start customizing it with your own creative videos. So some of the ideas for the, the videos that you can start uh, uploading, you can uh, upload cell phone videos and my students are always taking videos of each other during their practice. You can start having students share those kind of videos for, for class consumption. You do have to get permission from your, your, uh, your students and our students when they register for um, their classes, they do sign a, a, um, a photo waiver. Now, the people who do not sign that photo waiver do not agree to that. I simply do not uh, uh, videotape them. You can upload your live streams. You can upload the PowerPoint saved as MP4s. Uh, you can re uh, upload recorded meetings very uh, via Google Meet and Zoom screencast via Loom or Screencastify. But more importantly, today we're probably gonna focus a little bit more on adding contents from other YouTube channels, for instance, add, adding videos and playlists. You can customize the way your, your, uh, your videos are uploaded. You can basically say, I want to set all my video uh, my videos to public, unless I state so differently. 
I, I want all my videos to be listed under education and then you can pick your licenses. And again, you can add information about your account, especially with channel keywords. One thing that you may want to make a decision about initially, and then you can change your mind later, is do you want to allow advertisements to be dis displayed along your videos? And particularly when you're starting out with your own, um, with your with a channel for, related to your school, you may want to uncheck this until you basically see what's happening with your channel, who's accessing your channel, what kind of uh, uh, content is being uploaded to your channel by your staff and your students. And then you can basically scroll down to the end of this uh, and add your own school website. So now what, uh, what we're, we can make checks on about keeping your liked videos private and why would you want to do that? It's that you want people to focus in on what you're doing as somebody who represents their school. What, what kind of videos do you want them to be, want to be associated with that? So for instance, sometimes I might be on my own school website and I happen to see, oh, there's a new video by Stephen Colbert. Well, it's okay for me to like that. But the thing is, is does that rep the fact that I liked a, a video re not related to my school, is that a good representation of my school? It isn't, so I wanna keep that kind of stuff private. I wanna keep my subscriptions private as well because for instance, I don't want, I, I have no problem letting people know uh, what I'm subscribed to, but again, I wanna stay on brand specifically with my own, for my own school uh, YouTube account. Now, my personal uh, YouTube account, I don't care about that. But for my own school uh, YouTube account, I want to be a little bit more careful. Now, this is one thing that you want to uncheck. You want to you want to talk about your saved playlist to keep them private. You don't want to do that. You want to make that public. For instance, if you uh, import a playlist from uh, ESL or YouTube, uh, ESL uh, a channel, you want to make sure that your students can see that on their front page. So that's one thing that you that's one reason because you're going to be trying to share content from other from other webs or other channels. You want to so make sure you uncheck it here or you might even see it that looks like that way. So keep all my saved playlists private. No, you want to not make it private because you want to see the, your those you don't want your students to see the saved playlist. Okay, so if you want further information about channel customization, there is a specific uh, there's a specific playlist done by YouTube, and this is the Bitly right here. It's Bitly slash yt dash creator and that's all in small characters there's five videos there's more in here about customizing your own channel branding how to add captions uh, adding chapters to your videos using timestamps boosting the performance and getting more views with cards etc cetera, etc cetera. so let me check the next slide real quick okay so I'm going to step out of this very quickly, and I'm going to demonstrate a very quick way to start a YouTube channel. So I'm going to stop share. And now, hi Gretchen. Um, <laughs> good. Uh, all right, is everybody. Well, uh, I hope everybody is seeing a Google, the Google um, page, right? So what I'm gonna yes. do, yes, okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna switch to one of my accounts that I hope does not have a, uh, a YouTube account. So I'm gonna sign in. I'm gonna go up to the waffle on the top. I'm going to go to YouTube. 
I'm already logged on, logged on as Milpitas chat. What I want to do is I want to switch account and I want to go to that new website. So here it's saying it's basically got it. So here it's going to say create a channel. So now this is where I would be uploading that picture. I could change the name and it would simply say create a channel. So what you're going to be confronted with is something very bare bones. Here, this is where you can start. Um, this is where you would be uploading the videos. This is where your videos would appear, your playlist, channel, the about, where you would, uh, would uh, change things. This is where you would be adding information about your, um, the, the, um, your different settings, OK? So I just wanted to show you that a very, very bare bones YouTube account just as you're beginning. I'm now going to step back into the YouTube uh, presentation. And what I want to, uh, so again, please go to the YouTube Creator Academy account. Take a look at this playlist. Again, I provide the, the, the uh, a quick link here, bit.ly slash yt dash creator and take a look at these five videos that can tell you much more clearly and give you a really great demo of what it's like to just get your, your YouTube channel off, up off the ground. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue on with my presentation. One of the things that I want people to think about when they're planning out or if they're just thinking about their YouTube channel is the hierarchy that you want to have. So at the very, very top, you want to have something that basically welcomes people to your channel. So I have something here related to, uh, uh, I believe this is, oh, this is my uh, citizenship what, uh, podcast. So this is, this is uh, something that's basically to, uh, welcoming people to the channel. I have playlists that talk about important USCIS news alerts, some interviews that I've done, and more created videos here. So the the these are created what what are called created um, sorry created playlists where I'm basically picking and choosing the the videos and the sequence that they appear so the students can follow along in a sequential manner. Again, here's some another created playlist, and then here's a series of playlists that students can access. Also on the side, they take uh, YouTube has taken this away and put this actually at the very bottom of the page. They talked about featured channels that are channels that you want to have associated with your channel or basically support the content in your channel. Another way to look at this is looking at this as a as a graph. So you, of course, on your 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 front page, you want your channel header, which is basically the title of your channel. You want to have your feature video that welcomes people. You want to have your uploads that uh, that show your most recent things that you've uploaded to your channel. You have created playlists that are videos that you've organized uh, by you on a certain topic, and then save a playlist, things that you've imported from other channels that uh, basically illustrate a topic or that or um, that was chosen by another creator. So get a little, digging a little bit further into what a playlist is, it's a series of order videos that allow viewers to watch multiple view, viewer, uh, multiple videos in a predetermined order by the playlist owner. So sometimes you're gonna be watching the videos that I picked, and sometimes you're gonna be watching videos that have been picked by another, uh, another creator. The playlist can be composed of videos that have been uploaded by you, the, the, uh, the channel owner, or that have been uploaded by another creator and then saved and imported to your channel. So this is important. This is important to notice that you're not 
taking somebody else's material. You're not stealing somebody else's video. You're not downloading that video and then re-uploading it, it to your channel and presenting it as if it's your own material. You're basically creating a uh, uh, something almost like an alias that links the material that's on another creator's uh, channel to the, the your own channel. Again, we have more information here about um, about uh, playlists and uh, account creation. This is uh, this is the the quick link. It's bitly slash playlist dash help, and that's all lowercase. We have information here about creating and managing the playlists, sharing videos, and sharing playlists. So again, please take a look at this bitly slash playlist dash dash help. So I'm going to start now getting into the whole thing about adding content to your channel. I just want to step out just for a second and make sure does anybody have any questions as we continue? Somebody said no, not yet, or yes. Okay, oh, no, not yet. They don't have a channel for themselves. No, I want to do a shout out to Gretchen just for a second. I know she has a, a, a new uh, uh, podcast about uh, associated or that you can find on her website at Lighthearted Learning. And um, what's really interesting? No, the podcast is not. No, wait. Gretchen, go ahead. At, at Lighthearted Learning is Jamie Goldstein. Oh, Not okay. Me. Oh, Gretchen, okay. I'm going to check. So um, I'm going to talk about Jamie's just for a second, okay? Yeah. Gretchen, you, get, you should get your own podcast. You can come on my podcast. How about that? that would be cool. You want to talk about <laughs> citizenship? That would be awesome. Uh, Gretchen suggested a really good playlist um, the other day, uh, I believe by a Syrian American. The the what was the the, oh, the website? The website amerusa.com. They -E -E have a -E -E very very good YouTube channel. Okay, wow. yes. so what okay. happened? And I'll I can show this to you a little bit later. Was that they have wonderful uh, videos in Syrian and in English. So I have a playlist for Muslim American citizens. So it's basically different. So especially during Ramadan, my, a lot of my students couldn't come to class. So I created a playlist, which is now over 100 videos long. And I've uh, organized it into Urdu speaking Muslims, uh, uh, Farsi speaking Muslims, Syrian speaking Muslims, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and things from VOA and et cetera. Uh, so what is happening is the people can watch these, these uh, videos in, in line and they're from all over the internet brought together and people have nice. really found that very helpful. That's okay, nice. so by the way, thank you. Great tip on that one, okay? Great. Okay, um, I wanted to mention Jamie's uh, 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 podcast. A lot of uh, people who are creating podcasts, a lot of people are still not familiar with the podcast uh, apps, uh, but they, you can directly, when you create a podcast and upload it to your provider, it can be ported over to YouTube. So people can be using the YouTube app to listen to podcasts, which is very helpful for people. So. The students who are may not be as familiar with podcasting can still get access to that information. Okay, I'm going to return to my um, my uh, uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, here we are. Where this is the ad icon. So, <laughs> and this is the playlist. Uh, playlist. So you're using anytime you see this, you're able to add something to a playlist. You can select that if you want to see that video uh, later or if you wanted it to uh, add it to the playlist or you can create uh, a new playlist. If you create a new playlist, you have to, to enter the playlist name and you can use the drop down box to select your playlist privacy setting. If it's private only, you can uh, view the playlist. 
and click create. I just want to take a second to talk about playlist privacy settings. Why would you want to create a private playlist? Well, for instance, I have um, some of our students are fluent in English, but they never learn to write. They're not very, they're not literate. Many times they're not literate in their own language. They're fluent in speaking, but they still have really struggle with writing. And there is a certain amount of shame with that, uh, associated with that. So what I did was I put together Sp uh, really specialized targeted videos that they can watch in a sequence about things such as writing or forming letters or whatever the case may be. And I can share that playlist so they can simply watch those, those videos in a row. And they're not basically uh, distract by, distracted by other people trying to show them videos. So that's been really helpful. And it basically shows, it, I can present the information in a systematic way. Okay, so I'm going to make a distinction between created playlists and saved playlists. Created playlists are chosen and organized by topic by myself, and saved list playlists are created by another user and imported from that channel. Imported, I don't mean that I've downloaded it, it means that I've created an alias to this. So here's some examples of created playlists. There's a series that I really like from VOA Learning English about um, uh, uh, that one of theirs, um, what is that called? Uh, oh, sorry, it's just uh, gone out of my head. I have a playlist about ESL jobs and I have some really simple uh, videos based on ESL basic, say for instance, numbers. So these are things that I've picked and choose and organized into different playlists. Say playlist, um, I've uh, brought over um, a series or a playlist that was created by Mark Kulik. There's 13 videos in that playlist and it's basically talking about simple grammar. Or if we were talking about food and drink, because we have a lot of restaurant workers, here's another series that my students could do it. Now, I could go send my students simply to Mark Killick and say, hey, look for the food and drinks thing. But that is a massive channel with so many uh, uh, videos to distract the students. So if you have it on your own channel, all you need to do is say, go to our, my channel on YouTube, look for this playlist, click play, and they can basically follow along. You can also basically get the embed this information into your Canvas course or into your distance le uh, learning, uh, uh, learning management system, or um, I uh, embed it in my blog. So they have a one-stop shop where they can find the video and can uh, follow a series of videos. So here I'm basically showing you how I basically put a video that I found into a playlist. I found this random video from Mark Kulik about vegetables. I clicked the little icon that basically talks about uh, saving or sharing. I basically say I want to create a new playlist. I put in the name vegetables and I hit create. Now, if I want to, I'm going to talk about sharing this. So there's a couple ways that I can do this. I, uh, let me step back. I could be sharing this. I could be sharing the, um, sorry, the URL, or I can embed it here. And if I click the start at, I can basically move the, the where I want the students to start watching the video. I can get them to start watching it a little bit further in. For instance, there might be some introductory material in there that I want the students to skip. They can skip over that because, if, because I preset it and they can continue on. So again, you, you share it by clicking the share, copying the URL, copy and pay, or copy and pasting the embed, copying and pasting the embed code. Here's an example of me copying uh, the, uh, um, uh, the URL 
So this one is basically going to collect all the playlists of all these videos from Jennifer ESL. There are about 65 videos. I don't have to send the URL for every single one of the videos. This one URL is going to take care of everything. I could basically save it to Facebook if I had a, uh, and I know that some, some schools are, have Facebook pages where the students go and visit. Uh, I have things on Blogger. Uh, some people share it to Tumblr. Whatever the case may be, you, there's different ways to share it from, uh, from YouTube. Another thing I wanted to talk about was some people want to start videos at a certain place and they want to end videos in a certain place. So here's a way to basically modify the code. You're taking that embed code, you're, map, you're specifying the start and you're uh, specifying the stop. So they're going to only watch 30 seconds of this video. So again, take a look at this video, uh, bit.ly slash starts to uh, starts uh, starts top video yeah starts top video so take a look at this one and it's going to talk to you where to start it and where to end it start stop video that's it also uh one of the things that uh that now that i've gotten that 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 vid that video playlist I want to basically put, put it on my front page of my, my channel so everybody can see it. So here I've basically uh, put it on the front page and I'm going to have to show this. this they've changed this a little bit. So I'm going to show this when we, we go out to our back to our uh, website or our channel. Let's see. Again. Let's see. I want to see if I have one more. One more. Um, I want to make sure that I'm in the right place. Okay. Okay. So the next series is going to be about channel resources. So now this is a good place for me to stop this. And I'm going to step out to my channel and we're going to modify my channel a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is one of my channels. Um, here I basically post a lot of my ESL material. I'm gonna go here to, oh, sorry, if we take a look at my channel right now, I have a welcome from one of my January classes. I have video content organized by different, uh, by different quarters. I have some information by the Sam and Pat, I have a, a video playlist from Jennifer ESL and another one from Jennifer ESL. And I've organized groups of playlists here, uh, created playlists and things about conversations. So I go to customize channel. Oop. I bet I have to log in again. Make sure that I'm logged in. There I go. Customize channel. And I hear music. Okay, so here again, this is going to be up here when you get the customized channel. You're going to have the uh, the channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed versus people who subscribe. So these are simply welcome, welcome videos. We're going to have playlists that are we're going to have playlists that are already been organized and we're going to have featured channels below. I can basically ch uh, change the sequence by this by simply pushing these up and down. You have to publish it so you can see the the the, the changes that are made. So a lot of your the um, a lot of your modification of your channel will be here done here and channel customization customization okay so what i want to do right now is i want to go back to my channel 
And for instance, I am going to, uh, right now we're doing things about medical um, interviews. So I'm gonna type ESL medical interview, or actually, sorry, doctor's appointment. There's a couple ways that I can do it. So I'm seeing some really good things here that I would like to or uh, like to add. I could simply hit the the snowman on the the that side. I could say save to playlist, and I can create this new playlist. And I could say ESL doctor appointment. So uh, appointment. So I create, and now if I want to add this one, I can simply say save to the playlist and I can simply click this. And now that's been, it's been saved, okay? Let's get one more. Save to playlist, again, ESL, uh, okay. So now I think I want to get one more simply just because I want to get something in there about sequence, okay? So again, um, save to playlist, ESL Dr. Portman. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my channel. I can go to customize channel. I see now right now, I'm not seeing that playlist that I just created, okay? I wanna add that so my students can see the first thing because that's the, uh, the co-ops that we we're doing. But I can't add anything more because I already have enough material on there. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm basically going to delete one of these things remove the section, and now I can add that new playlist that I wanted to do. So I can talk about, I wanna add a single playlist and I wanna add the playlist that I just created. So the playlist that I just created is now called, whoop. Am I not seeing it? M-E-E, -E, emergency, oh! The reason why I can't add it is because I haven't be able, been I haven't made it um, I haven't made it public yet. So let's make that public and then we can continue on. So now we're going to go to the playlist. Okay. Okay, we have the ESL doctor appointments. I want to edit it. Uh, one of the first things I want to do is I want to make it public. I can say I want I can move it into the whatever sequence that I want. I'll say, hey, that looks really good. And then now I can basically say so now it's public. Now, when I go back to my my channel and I customize it again, Now I can add the section, I hope, oh. I can add the section, I can add the single playlist, I can add the ESL uh, playlist. It's at the very bottom. I want to move it up slowly. Uh, it doesn't like the audit, the really quick jumps. And if I publish it, view the channel, it might take a second for it to refresh. But when it refreshes, yeah, now it's refreshing. The students can see it there, but if you still need to share this with the students, you can basically click the share, grab that URL, paste it into an uh, uh, email to your students and it could be it could be disseminated to all your students. 
Okay, so I'm now going to step back into my my presentation, but before I do that, any questions? Any questions? Everybody okay? All right, so Zoom. Okay, so now I'm going to go into uh, more channel resources, and the reasons why I'm going into channel resources is because I want to talk about people don't already have uh, some people don't already have the videos that they want to show their students they want to build up the their channel and then start incorporating student videos so first one that i like to use especially lower level students is mark kulik so this is a esr yeah or efl's teacher in japan and originally, I did not like this channel because I'm thinking it's too cute. Uh, it's, you know, cartoons, it's slow, it's repetitive. And the, re the things that I didn't like, the, uh, didn't like were exactly the, the things that the students wanted to see. So I really saw them sitting there and repeating after Mark Kulik and basically taking things slow and having them watch every single movement of the of the uh, the uh, presentation so i'm saying well maybe i'm taking a look at this as a native speaking teacher maybe i should think about what is appropriate for my own students so the more i started incorporating mark kulik into uh, uh into my curriculum talking about certain grammar points or short dialogues, whatever the case may be, it was really, really helpful for my low level students. Another one that's good for, uh, for intermediate uh, users is 7ESL. So they have a lot of things in there about uh, points of grammar, uh, idioms, uh, what is that called? Uh, phrasal verbs. So these, this is really good. Again, it's very slow and they use a type of um, technology where they basically are drawing out the, uh, drawing out the presentation as they're saying the words. So it's really interesting and they're really riveted. Now, some of these videos can be as long as uh, 15 minutes. I like to show this to my students in maybe one to three minute chunks. So again, taking a look, the, 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 the products from 7ESL is really good. A lot of people love to use Jennifer, uh, Jennifer ESL. So this is great for multi-level English language learners. Um, they, she does a lot in there about common uh, phrasal verbs and she, she's now doing some um, member only live streams. So those are good too. So take a look at the things from Jennifer ESL. A um, couple years ago, she was doing a lot, especially with business communication. So that was really good. And I'm going to demo something from her in just a bit. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with VOA News and VOA Learning English. These are basically um, the YouTube channels for those two websites. And again, um, especially the one from VOA Learning English, they put up one minute um, or what do they call it, VOA 60 seconds. And they take four news stories from all over the world and basically present it within one minute. So this was a really good conversation starter for my, my students where they are identifying where this is ha happening. They might share with what they know about the, the story already. They might talk about that this person, uh, what their leader position, leadership position is. So that's been very appropriate. Also, VOA Learning English has a really good series um, about the American presidents and uh, their own language learning uh, situation. Jennifer, we have yes. two questions. Yeah. Will you be sharing the presentation and created playlist is like a curated list? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, let me, can I throw, just take a second and throw the, the links into the chat? Okay. So that's the link in the chat. Okay. Anybody have a, a problem with that? Is everybody able, able to access that? Okay. And then a curated list is a created list. So that's what I mean by 
curated. You're the one who's picking, you're previewing all the videos and you're putting them in a special sequence and you're sharing them with your students. And you can set the the uh, the privacy uh, the privacy settings. You 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 choose the privacy settings. So, for instance, if I have a student who really needs to address their writing skills, forming the letters skills, I can create a special playlist just for that student, and only they have access to that. Okay, so um, I have created playlists for. Numer numeracy for citizenship for civics anything that you want to create it for and share it with your students you can do that okay um let me i'm going to step back into the powerpoint uh this one is really a great series again this is a, a part of voa or associated with voa it's uh, called american english at state and so they not only have a video playlist for uh, teachers about um, uh, tips for teaching English or talking about journalism. No, excuse me. Let me I'll call it, step back to that. They have a, a whole series of different playlists about teaching English. Also, they have a video playlists related to teaching uh, 21st century skills. Uh, learning idioms, conversational English. So there's something for students and there's also something there for teachers as well. One of the things that I'm personally very interested in is news literacy. And VOA Learning English put out a series of six videos uh, about news literacy. And then American English followed up with that on a, what is it called, a MOOC. Um, I'm forgetting about that right this very second, but it's basically an online um, uh, online course about teaching people journalistic skills. So I was trying to move my students from not only being critical of the news and looking at different sources about the news, and then for them to move from that into contributing to the news. So now I have students actually sending in news report uh, or mi many reports about what's happening in their neighborhood or pictures that they are taking around town they're contributing that to their local newspaper so and a lot of that stuff was informed by what was happening on american english at state i want to talk about one more initiative that uh, the state department is uh, is promoting is another channel called share america and share america is talking about different issues uh, related to our foreign and not, yeah, what do I want to say, international relations. So we're talking about, for instance, they're talking about uh, stories from Ukrainian Americans. They're talking about some of their experiences in the earlier war, or they're talking about uh, our commitment to uh, uh, climate, uh, climate change, um, or they're talking about um, different parts of America. And they have these videos in multiple languages. So again, uh, really good initiatives from VOA, from American English at State, and from Share America uh, coming out of the State Department. I have one more resource I wanted to talk about was gclearnfree.org. They have a whole, They of course, we know their, their website uh, where they basically have information about work, uh, workforce skills. This is their website where they're basically hosting all the videos that appear, appear on their, uh, their website. So you're going to be able to assign these, uh, these playlists to your students so they can take a look at this. I wanted to stop just very quickly and to share this, uh, share this with the with people. And um, can I ask what, how my what my time is right now? It is 149. And so I have about about 40 40 minutes to go. Is that correct? 
if you're going for the 90 minute, if you're going for the 60 minute, then you have um, 11. So it depends on whether you're going for it. Are you going for the 60 minute present session or the 90 minute presentation? It depends. It really depends on, I, I'm going to stop maybe my presentation in about 11 minutes. I'm going to get back more to demo. So let me return to my presentation, okay? I'll stop sharing. Okay. Uh, I, does anybody have any other suggestions for any resources that they would like to share uh, that they use uh, online? Some people, if you are dealing with very, very low literacy students, some people like to use zero English which is good about simply doing numbers and alphabet. So, and uh, tongue twisters. Anybody else want to share anything from YouTube that they really like? Chat. Okay. Thank you for, thanks Karen for the, the 90 minute shout out. I may need to take a drink of water on that before that. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with the presentation. Let me close the chat. Okay. So I want to talk now about actually using the YouTube videos in the classes. So I know we've talked very quickly about account cre or, uh, channel creation. We talked very qu quickly about the importance of playlists. Uh, so we're trying to basically choose the videos that our students are watching and having them focus in on a single topic so they don't basically go off topic and wander into uh, the farthest reaches of the internet, particularly if they start watching the shorts, it's basically shorts are on YouTube or very much like TikToks where you could just watch one after one and an hour goes by and no homework has happened. So, okay. So one thing that really isn't on YouTube um, or what is actually better to go to the actual website is We Speak NYC. And this, is, um, this was a series that was originally um, created, I think in 2008 by the Office of Immigrants in New York City. And then um, they returned to the series in I think 2018 or 2019. And so they're talking about uh, stories not specifically related to citizenship, but related to EL civics. So there's things in there about, um, let's see, what is that called? They have things in there about domestic violence, depression, diabetes, asthma. And the asthma one is particularly interesting because they're talking about asthma, but they're using the filming of a telenovela to tell the story about how to treat asthma. Or they're using the whole thing uh, about um, uh, the fir a first date to talk about financial literacy. Or they're using uh, the whole thing about uh, joining a soccer team to talk about the importance of back to school issues. The new, uh, these are uh, two videos from the, um, from the latest series, the 2000, 2018 series with the, uh, uh, this, this young girl in the middle, she's, she's really interested in nutrition. She's interested in getting a good job, but her eager, eagerness to share her knowledge about nutrition and healthy food really gets in her way of doing a good job at work. So she's, and she comes off almost as a really judgmental person when she's looking at people's, uh, uh, what they're trying to buy in the grocery store. And she makes starts trying to make quote unquote helpful suggestions and her boss is like, you can't do that. And meanwhile, so she's trying to do this good job, but she's also trying to balance this against uh, trying to uh, do well in her high school. And they also visit a, um, what is that called? A, uh, a pantry, a food pantry where, uh, and to give out, uh, uh, food to needy families. So it's really they're uh, bringing a lot of elements together into a single episode. 
Also with the whole thing about crossing the street, they have something in there about uh, interracial love and, a ba- and working at a bakery. So you got two things that I love just right there in a single episode. So taking a look at some of these videos and taking a look at the PDFs that are attended to it. So they have like little photo novellas that are related to each one of the episodes or they have things related to civics. So for instance, they have little small little guides about what happens if you're stopped by the police or about the domestic violence, et cetera. So that kind of stuff can be really, really super super helpful. So again, I cannot um, make that, I can't suggest that enough. Uh, Somebody, Linda uh, Lehman, talked about Bob the Canadian. I did not know that he, oh, yes, I did know he had videos. Bob the Canadian is really great. So you'll follow him. He starts in a parking lot and you follow him into the grocery store or a hardware store. And uh, he's very, he's a very joyful person and has a very good uh, sense of humor and so people really he's very very entertaining um, it kind of reminds me of a podcast that came out of Canada about uh, for ESL it was called Q-Lips and they were they're Canadians Canadian teachers talking is speaking in a, a slow and steady English pace but this one I think is you're basically seeing and you get to know Bob and you get to know uh, his life. And so that's very, very uh, interesting. So I'm going to definitely add uh, Bob the Canadian to my, my presentation next one. So thanks a lot for reminding me about that. Uh, back to this one. Again, take a, take a look at We Speak New NYC. Uh, I love using their uh, their videos, and I love using their the PDFs with my literacy level class. Next one I want to talk about is uh, have you used Uglish? So Uglish is almost like using a Google search engine, but they're accessing different uh, different videos on YouTube. And I particularly like that they usually try to pull things from TED, uh, from TED Talks. But with Euglish, you get, um, you get, uh, so you, you basically put in information about what you, you want to see. For instance, uh, I put in the, uh, the search term binge watch. So you get to see people, you hear it spoken. For pronunciation you also see how they use it in their in their talk or you can basically see uh, what it's co-located with or pronunciation so again is anybody using Uglish? i was using this a lot with a, a lot a lot of times okay somebody just mentioned invid english lessons are fabulous um Yes, the, the quizzes are really, really good. I One of the things that I was having a real problem with, with not, well, not a real problem, with Ingvit, there was almost so much information, it was basically hard to dig through. But then they basically took the opportunity to, to, to divide out some of the teachers and then to create the channel. So I now think Ingvit is a much, much better resource. So again, this is engvid.com. Uh, I prefer that I personally prefer their their website to their um, to just their straight YouTube things. I find things a lot better on their their website. So that's a really really super great resource. Thank you for sharing that, Amber. Oh, USA Learns videos. Yeah, the US. Are you talking about? What USA Learns videos, uh, Evelyn, can you talk about, uh, is there a certain USA Learns video, or a, a channel that you're talking about? Because uh, USA Learns videos, they were reusing things from U- uh, um, from VOA News. So they were taking the uh, Let's Learn English one and two they were importing it into USA Learns and they added a whole bunch of extra activities with that. So it made the VOA, the VOA news material really pop. 
So I, if that's the series that you're talking about, or I think, another, yeah, go ahead. I, I do think it's the same uh, series. I usually just, I log into my USA Learns account. You oh. can, every video, you can just click on it and it'll take you to YouTube, but it is the same as the whole putting English to work series that maybe you're referring to. Well, wait a minute, is it Anna Mateo? Is it the Anna Mateo one or is there? A, no, it's not one. Anna. It's not the VOA. It's uh, the teacher the Sylvia or Sylvie Marquez is the teacher and she works with adults and uh, yeah. the adult and then, education school. Yeah. Okay. And then there was another one that was the guy with basically a shaved head. That was a really old series too. So again, USA, Le uh, USA Learns, their genius is taking some material and basically adding a lot of activities and really making that work so i'm not as familiar with the ser their series making english work but now you really inspire me to go after that so again yeah you can take a look at this those videos separately on youtube and embed them in your canvas course from the youtube but the 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 activities on usa learns um is going to really really deliver that that make that content even richer english for all yes absolutely thank you very much thank you diana voa materials for the citizenship lessons really really good yeah voa the voa uh citizenship lessons they used uh if you're talking about the civic session, they reused the content from a really uh, uh, older citizenship um, series. But again, the added video, the added activities really, really made that help, really helped it. So yeah, they did a really good job. And we're, I'm super excited about USA Learns. They're coming out with a new uh, course about immigrant immigration, which is based off of a, a USCIS document, which was basically welping, welcoming immigrants to the United States. And it was, so you would have this handbook and it was published in 14 different, um, 14 different languages. The, the problem is, is that you want it, there's so much material in there, you actually need the activities to help process that. So I'm really, really looking forward to this uh to this uh new um series that's coming out and usa Le learns has a really good series now for medical text so again usa learns okay but i hope you guys take a look at uglish too um let's see what's the next one oh jennifer uh, jennifer esl and i wanted to talk about this in terms of um, how to create a, um, a, uh, a transcript. So I do have a, a video here at bit.ly slash uh, TR, capital TR dash small D-E-M-O, uh, uh, transcript demo. And basically it shows how to create a transcript for a video. So some sometimes you're thinking like, wow, this this video that Jennifer ESL talked about when she was writing a business email to uh, about uh, receiving um, a request, request for a job interview or uh, to write a thank you for a job interview. So how can I get this material to my students? So what you would do is you would go down to the bottom, you see the three dots at the bottom of the screen. So it's got the bottom of the video on the very right, under the video, you can say open transcript. And when you open the transcript, it's going to basically see, you're going to see the entire transcript. You're going to see the, um, the timestamps next to it. So you say, well, I want to make a close paragraph exercise with this. How can I do this? If you, if you click the, the snowman on the top, the three dots on the, the top, it will basically take the timestamps off and then you can simply copy the information, put it into a, um, 
into a Word document or whatever text document you, you uh, use, and you can start manip manipulating the, uh, the, the information in there. So, um, and I've had, I've had situations where I've actually asked upper level t students to basically go in and start correcting the, um, start uh, taking care of the punctuation within the, in this, uh, in this um, transcript. Note down here, you can make, you can have a choice between looking at the English auto-generated transcript, or if you click this, it also sometimes has the choice for the English corrected transcript. So again, you can basically toggle back and forth with this and use this information again to share information with your students. So to please take a look at this, um, this bit.ly down here. Again, it's bit.ly slash tr dash demo. And you can actually see me do this, uh, do this and follow along on that. If people were really interested in that, perhaps I can do that during uh, the next section. Again, uh, I really love VOA. Um, and particularly, um, sometimes I like to use uh, VOA videos, especially to illustrate part 12 um, information. So we're here we have things about um, uh, a woman who is a, who joined the military. And so I basically embedded it in a blog. And then I also paired it up with some, um, uh, so I, I I attached it to the, the article itself. Um, she has a further information in here about um, that she wrote a memoir about her experience of joining the military so she can finish college. And then uh, I associated it with some civics questions. Unfortunately, on the bottom, I don't, I don't, you don't see that I've also associated this as part of my blog post with, um, uh, the section on the military or the section of the N400 about military service. So using some of these VOA uh, videos are so rich that you can talk about different parts of the N400 and the civics questions and to deliver, uh, to again, reinforce the things that they are learning, the students are learning in their citizenship class. Uh, some people mentioned earlier the use of Ed, uh, no, sorry, Ed Puzzle. Ed Puzzle is basically you uh, is a extension by Google, well by Ed Puzzle that you can add to uh, your your Google account or your YouTube account, and basically you can use it to create quizzes. So, for instance, I took one of the um, uh, president's quizzes, which is just a minute, and it will show a little bit of content and then automatically stop and the student will basically answer these questions. Now, don't be like the teacher Jennifer, okay, in the fact that I took a minute video and it stopped 10 times, it, 10 different questions. You're not learning in anything like that. So please be mindful of people's attention spans, okay? Um, let's see. I just saw some, um, I use short how to and do it yourself videos with this C Oh, closed caption turned on and then they can see what is happening in here. That is really, really a good idea. Close, do it yourself. I had never, that's really good. I like that. I re, I'm gonna uh, turn that on the head on its head. Like originally when I, um, I really resisted closed captions. Uh, initially when I was posting my U.S. citizenship stuff because I wanted people to really learn to listen and to understand what is being said because so many students would sit there and simply read the, the closed captions. And I said, hey, when you go to your citizenship interview, there's going to be no subtitles, okay? No matter how hard you look at that officer, that, those subtitles are not going to appear. However, now I, I see that this is actually an issue of, uh, of uh, uh, justice and inclusion. So basically look, making sure that my, my closed captions are good. And now I've been challenged to actually describe what's actually happening in my videos. 
uh, basically trying to get uh, a little bit closer to inclusion is going to be really, really super helpful. So again, thank you for sharing that comment. Any other comments? Thank you, Karen. Um, I hope I hope some people have used uh, Edpuzzle. Another, um, so um, again, this is turning a video into a automatic uh, uh, automatic quiz. Some people like Edpuzzle, although I have to say one thing about Edpuzzle, they have really great resources for teacher training and different ideas on how to implement that. So again, take a look at that. Yeah, oh, can be shown once with CC and again without that. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm gonna pick up on that with American um, American history. No, wait a minute, what is that called? Uh, from, it's called Preparing the Oath from the Smithsonian. It's a joint venture with USCIS and the American History Museum in uh, Washington, DC. You can watch those citizenship videos with the closed captions on and with it out, off. And it's really good to toggle back and forth. So uh, seeing that and basically saying you have an opportunity to watch this again. So test your understanding. Uh, and go forth on that. Again, anything that basically makes our stu st students uh, comfortable will basically help facilitate because of competency. So I really appreciate, again, that, that comment, Carol. Karen. Um, again, we have similar th uh, things with Pear Deck and Nearpod. I was interested to see if anybody is actually using Add puzzle or pair deck or near pod to basically uh, use their to turn their videos into assessments. Another thing you can do is uh, I did a lot of things uh, related to the census by embedding the uh, by embedding the um, the census uh, PSAs into Google Forms. And so uh, to basically help uh, create, um, to help teach the whole thing about the, the census. So again, that was really helpful. So um, again, using either Nearpod, uh, Pear Deck, uh, Edpuzzle, or Google, um, Google Forms is really helpful. Amber, Edpuzzle, Edpuzzle, yeah. I think that's good. Okay. Now um, that's it with OTAN. So I am wanted to go and check. Screen sharing is stopped. Okay. And now I want to go and check on our YouTube channel. And I wanted to do something about closed captions really quickly. Okay. So here we are. I'm back at my content. This is the video that I uploaded earlier. I want to go to subtitles. It shows that I have a language chosen. So let's see what language it is. So this one is that if I basically did it right now, you would simply see the the um, This is what you would see. Hopefully I can, oh, let me, I'm sorry. I have to stop share and make sure you can hear the audio. Share, share so. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I'm with, okay. So if you can see this, that my, my name is not even close. This is how I, so this is what they hear. This is what YouTube hears. I'm going to want to correct that. With OTAN as a subject matter expert for citizenship and technology. Thanks for attending my workshop. Bye bye. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to show how I can edit this. Okay. So what I do I want to edit the timings? I need to push this out of the way. I'm Sorry about that. 
what I can do now is I would say that I can copy and paste this into a text file and create it that way. However, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hi. My name is Jennifer, Jennifer Collardi. How could they even get that from, how could they even get that from Gallardi? Oh, it's obviously this, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm with OTAM as a subject matter expert, subject matter expert. So as you can see, it's just like simply correcting a text, okay? And I can even add something about OTN.us. Publish. So now, this is gonna be the video language. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. And you're thinking, well, that's good, but I only want one, I only want one line appear at, at one time. So basically here, if I hit a return, now you're only gonna see one word at a time. Great, my mouth is open. That's just wonderful. Okay. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I'm with OTAN. And you can basically start moving this around and making lines appear one at a time as a subject matter expert for subject matter expert. And again, you can see that's the timestamps to the right. For so it is, thanks, okay. For citizenship and technology. Thanks for attending my workshop. Bye-bye. Okay, so now if we take a look at this again, you're gonna see a much cleaner video. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I'm with OTAN as a subject matter expert for citizenship and technology. Thanks for attending my workshop, bye-bye. So we could publish it. So now if you go to the website, you're going to actually see this. We're going to go back to my, my YouTube channel. I'm saying, I don't want this to be my, I don't want this to be my welcome anymore. I want to customize my channel. I'm going to go and I'm going to change the video. I'm going to have that hello, change the video, hello. I'm gonna scroll down and remember I was saying that uh, earlier, I was saying something that I was uh, talking about ESL doctor's appointments. So I'm gonna basically move this up. Move these up. So now if I publish, what I'm gonna see in just a second is that, and it does take maybe about a minute for it to update. I'm gonna see this as the first video on the very top, welcoming people. I'm gonna see the this new uh, playlist that I created, ESL doctor's appointments. So my students will basically go there and start re reviewing the information that they need for the co-ops assessment that's coming up. So here, I'm going to go back to my channel. There's my video here. And there's my ESL. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. Okay, so here we have the that 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 um, OTAN video that I just created. 
I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the work that I was preserving for my students. Uh, I was finding particularly that we were uh, creating so many uh, videos and taking pictures of each other and there was schoolwork and people would take a picture of the schoolwork and et cetera, et cetera. So what I had is my students started, some, I had my students start texting me their, their videos of what they were taking pictures of in the classroom. It was getting to the point where I'm thinking, wow, we're almost in a post-literate society. Nobody's writing anything down. I'm saying, well, hey, maybe I can make that work for us by preserving some of the stuff that we actually do in class. So this is a really quick video. Um, and originally, a lot of times we were uh, doing this um, earlier in the year with our Zoom, with our Zoom uh, screenshots. Here we have something from you. Uh, oh, this is a, what something that I actually did on Zoom. So you're seeing um, me present something related to the alphabet. And again, I was basically um, uh, annotating the the uh, the videos. Or excuse me, I was annotating the screenshots as we were done and was taking picture uh, screenshots of them. The verb to be. So again, again, here's a, scre uh, a screenshot of when I was presenting from um, uh, Ventures, their uh, electronic ebook. And I simply did a lot of this stuff. It was, again, uh, simply things from Zoom that I was taking, putting together pictures that my students were taking. Uh, of course, everybody recognized first class reader. Some of these things were being annotated by the students. Some of them were being annotated by me. I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit. And so I would simply gather together things from Zoom, or from the pictures that the students were submitting, I would put them together. Sometimes the students would come back and even annotate those, those some of the screenshots even further. I, would, I gathered them together every week. I put it in a really, the Windows video editor, and basically I created uh, videos with them. And students really appreciated that their work was being, uh, that it was being captured, things were being captured at school, and basically they could review it outside of school. Does anybody have anything to... Okay, somebody was talking about then you have double captions. Okay, so a lot of people when they, they are, uh, when you're uh, talking about the double captions, some people, uh, when they're watching videos, it's automatically uh, set to the, um, what do I want to say? The automatic captions? That's not right. I'm sorry. But what I did was when I went into the video, I said that the language of this video is not the automatic captions, it's English. And so when they access that video, they're not going to see the automatic captions one, they're going to see the proper English one. Yeah, auto, thank you, auto sync. <laughs> 